Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Baer, and we have Jason Jeffries with us. Now, the information Jason is going to present is some white papers that is called Lucifer Experiment. The Lucifer Experiment. Yes, that's right. This is not a typo. And I can't wait to hear what this is about. This is cutting-edge stuff right here. This is from the European physical journal and jason it's great to have you on the show here with us the leak project how are you doing i'm doing good how are you doing rex fantastic it is absolutely amazing the opportunities that present themselves lately let's move on to this information that you're presenting to us here jason i mean this is pretty powerful man the lucifer project what's this about it's it's about uh, they're trying to there's a lot of aspects if you look at it they're um, trying to basically detect like uh, dark matter and um, they're also trying to like enrich uh, basically make their own selenium crystals and like basically um, highly radioactive materials you know you only got like uh, uranium and thorium they're the only two metals that are like highly radioactive that like are just naturally found. So they're putting these things in these uh, different type of sensors, and they they when they get it that way, they can um, basically silence like the background radiation and vibration of the universe, kind of. And when they get, they're looking for what's called uh, neutrinoless double beta decay. It's like a special kind of um, radioactive decay that um, basically a, a neutron or electron and um, a positron, they, they hit each other and they annihilate each other and they release only electrons. And so they can kind of see like dark matter and, and things like that. So they, if they could do that without any um, background interference, they could actually map out how to create um, basically the periodic table of dark matter, if you will. You know, like 8% of the universe is uh, just about um, luminous material that we could see and then the other stuff is like not 75 percent of its uh, dark energy and then 25 percent dark matter so there's so much that we don't know basically but they could map this out and find the anti of everything but when you start looking into that um, you look into um, when you find that that you you see that it could basically when you release just two electrons you could uh, come to the, the binding energy that, that binds the cell, uh, the, them together, the atom together. So it re uh, releases full energy potential to the maximum, breaking it down to its like subatomic particles, which causes a chain reaction to, you know, the particles around it. We don't know what it could do because um, it's such a rare thing. They actually just observed it last year for the first time but they want to see it um in like more of a controlled setting i guess so as you read the papers you look through and see that uh they all they need is um basically let me see if i can find it here they just need uh a high mass object there it is they just need uh to employ a large mass source so they need something like the size of a planet or a failed star like Jupiter, Saturn, something like that. That's where, um, you know, the Cassini probes and things like that were going uh, to get this inside of it, you know, to kind of create the temperature or the, and the pressures and the crazy stuff that's going on to make their own crystals and enrich uranium and selenium and things like that to basically make nuclear, you know, technology. So it's, it's really crazy. And when you when you come into the whole creating of dark matter and stuff like that, I mean, you know, you're getting into like quantum theory and stuff like that. But when you're talking about the anti, you know, it if it meets its its um, opposite, they just annihilate each other and release full energy. Like I said, going uh, it it destroys the binding energy, so none of the particles are held together anymore. So. Basically, some of them, like, uh, you know, that's what they're doing at CERN. They can't figure out where some of the particles are going. They're, like, phasing out of this existence, kind of, <laughs> this dimension. So, the God particle, if you will. 
So but what exactly you, is, sorry to interrupt, Jason, what exactly is the Lucifer project then? I mean, what is the agenda of this besides wanting to throw a planet at another planet or something? Well, like what I, I have no idea. Uh, there's a lot of aspects when you look at it, like selenium and these crystals that they're making. They're they're used for lasers, um, weapons, like high grade technology, basically. Like it's it's such it's one of like the rarest elements. Like in it's it doesn't even happen in nature that often. So, but they know it's like super stable for um, like there's about like five or six isotopes of it, but. Uh, but one of them is stable. It's like actually got a really long half-life and it's super, super rare. So there's so many applications scientifically and, you know, military wise and all these things to create these crystals for. But, um, the dark matter aspect, it's, uh, they're, they're learning about symmetry of the universe and, you know, the anti and black holes and dismembering matter. You know, if you, if you have, the exact map of this like antimatter, then you have the way to essentially make up how to destroy anything just by making it touch another particle. You know, you could map out, I mean, in the wrong hands, it's like forbidden knowledge, you know? So it's kind of, so you think that you think that whoever's working on this is doing it for defense purposes or military purposes. When you look into it, because they use them a lot with laser technology, things like that, it's, it's a, really stable the unstable um isotopes of it have a half-life of like 38 seconds so something like that you could have like a pound of it and you'd watch it disappear before your eyes almost like solid matter like evaporating into radiation so that's it's crazy to think about like um it's the same thing but they actually have a stable element of it so they need something like a furnace of like the inside of a star or a failed star to send this thing to and so they got these, uh, basically these like detectors and things like that that um, can detect these subatomic particles in like the dark matter, as you will, like like I said, and detect it in a scenario that they could actually map it out. Um, and from there, you know, the applications are endless. But if you look into like uh, the old ancient hermetic teachings and things like that, yeah, a lot of people know about like the Luciferian experiment and things like that. Um, I think it was like supposedly in uh, one of Thoth's writings, and they talked about creating a synthetic a synthetic Merkaba and like on Mars and destroyed their atmosphere, and they came here and did it in Atlantis and same thing like that. Uh, if you look through the Emerald, Emerald Tablets, it even correlates with that. Um, but a lot of that's actually in uh, a book I read. Um, but you got there's a lot of that out there. But it's uh, you know this ancient idea of the Luciferian experiment. So I always thought that, that the name you know I mean it's light bearer, so it could be light and love if you want to uh, take Cupid into the aspect as well. But Lucifer um, always had a darker undertone, you know. Uh, this that I have the little excerpt from that book I was talking about, um, and it shows you like it was a uh, basically a war between two brothers, as we know from a lot of ancient cultures, and like an experiment um, to kind of separate consciousness from um, source, kind of, and uh, do it like synthetically, like a make a synthetic synthetic soul, if you will, and some weird stuff like that, but. Um, yeah, if you, you really look into this stuff, it's pretty creepy. Uh, a lot of the conspiracy theories things think they're they're trying to like ignite Saturn or Jupiter and make a second star. And um, I personally don't think they were. They, you, even if you give it an accelerant, they they're a failed star for a reason. Um, I don't think you could start the fission process to to make it, or else it would have happened. You know, like <laughs> the stars are stars for a reason. So. Um, yeah, there's just so much to this. If you guys like, go ahead and read over the papers yourself and things like that. You can take your own interpretations out of it because there's a lot of ways and agendas you could take out of it. But basically, the purity grades, I think, when you're talking about like um, such a, a long half life that they have, that it's it's pretty much weapons grade. And they're talking about strapping these things to a probe and sending them to the center of a large mass body which would have to be a, a very large planet or a small star. So that's the only thing they haven't 
done yet. So where even... are they working on? Sorry to interrupt again. Where are they working on this thing then? I mean, are they just doing all <laughs> computer generated stuff as of right now? Is there a CERN type system that's using this? I mean, is this in conjunction with a CERN type technology? Do you know? I, I think that's exactly what it is. Uh, the it's in it has to be in conjunction with CERN and the things they're doing there because um, they're talking about these scintillating crystals. These uh, these it's a bolometer is what they call it, and it's kind of they're actual able to detect like the smallest like particles. And then if you know anything about CERN, that's the same thing. It goes hand in hand. And um, if you look at who funded the projects, it's like. You, you can actually look right directly into who's doing it. Um, this is one of the companies that is actually like the umbrella company, you could say. Um, not You could follow the money trail from there, but I've actually found uh, in the paperwork somewhere. I can't remember right off the he top of my head, but it, it shows you it's got a lot of funding from a lot of big companies like Switzerland, Italy, and, uh, you know, France, Rome, you know, uh, it's all it shows you like all the sources and where they're the money and the people where they're coming from um you know it, it, it gives you the whole spiel there but uh the the thing that's amazing is like all this stuff is like they they discover this they observe it and then they write the paper on it afterwards like this is all within the last year and they actually had uh solid photos in some of these if I can find them of the detectors and they almost look like things from CERN I can't I might not have that page up here but yeah here's like one of the diagrams like I said and um, it's kind of just looks like a little satellite like something you would mount to just about anything you know you could put it inside of CERN or you know just inside of one of the tubes there and uh, use it to detect the collisions as well but um, that's actually exactly what they're doing. They're talking about colliding. Uh, well, it shows you. They're talking about, you know, colliding them so they actually just destroy each other, basically. Um, and when it does that in a sp specific way, which is the neutrino, double neutrino, this uh, way that we were looking at there, the breakdown, it actually just a re a releases electrons instead of um so basically you could take that and ra has raw energy or you could use that to um to run it into its opposite and annihilate it as well so it could be like a chain reaction that's what i'm saying uh it actually what the, the these particles x um just like what i kind of say is like uh incorrectly labeled as photons you know like because you know when you think about tesla and the other teachers they they thought that the idea of the particle and the wave was kind of silly because it was actually just disturbing the ether it was manifest and unmanifest it wasn't really a speed it was induction it was a chain reaction if you would just like uh like i said clapping with your hands or anything else it changes everything else around it in vibrations not you know, and the medium being the ether. So what they're talking about is destroying something, releasing raw energy, or taking it to destroy another thing. Because when it meets its opposite, you know, when you just have those raw floating particles like that, and they meet their polar opposites, they just turn into raw energy. So potential energy turns into kinetic energy, and blam, you have endless applications for that, including just ripping particles to their... <laughs> most you know basically you could if you could map that out and have the big enough big enough fuel source you could end the whole universe or you could use it for positive applications but i feel like uh everybody knowing the state that the government and the people of power have been in for the last you know thousands of years that it's definitely not a great thing that they're doing this <laughs> you know you they they spend all this money while we have real problems in the world you know um it seems like we probably have renewable energy when you look into it, you know, things that uh, we have starving people and failing economies and things like that. And then they're trying to build like crystals for space weapons and uh, all this. I don't know. It's it's wild. man. It's welcome to the new world order where they love you. 
Do you have anything you wanted to add to it? I mean, <laughs> well, I'm looking at this, and the technology that you're describing is, you know, I mean, it's fascinating. And I'm also thinking of this interview that I had earlier today with Alexander, and he was talking about the different types of nuclear weapons, the different generations, and we were getting into the discussion of Planet X, and if a planet does get close enough to the Earth to where it's going to cause a mass extinction, he says there's technologies that are available now that could literally wipe a planet in, you know, into oblivion to where it would be of no threat. And he described the different types of nuclear weapons in, in very good detail, in my opinion, and he was not blowing smoke. I mean, what he was saying was made perfect sense. And I'll tell you what, with the weapons and stuff that they've got now, they can literally blow the earth up time after time after time, yet they keep putting money in, into bigger weapons and crazier weapons and nastier weapons. And I'm starting to wonder, okay, so they've already got weapons that are intense enough to blow up the planet enough time, so why not come out with a solution to protect the planet from those types of weapons? I mean, we already know we can blow shit up. Let's yeah. do something to offset that and then have a force field type effect where you can create a force field that could block that type of nuclear disaster or something like that. But this Lucifer tech, I mean, this is this is fascinating. I'm glad that you brought this to the leak project and given us this update because I've, I haven't even heard of this thing before. And it sounds like it would be... Here's another thing, too, about CERN is I know that there are CERN-type facilities all over the world. I've got a close friend, almost family. He's like 92 now, 93, and he worked with CERN. He worked with a... And I've seen pictures of him in the CERN facility. He made these vacuum tubes for CERN, and he's also got several patents on uh, a specific generation of night vision and these tubes for night vision. And also, he was talking about how there was a facility in Dallas at one point in time, which is still there, but it got shut down, at least to the public, and with the fact that and he was working in there, and he was not with the public. I mean, he was a contractor, and he got booted out as well. So even in Dallas, Texas, there is a CERN-like facility. They're all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like um, when you really look into the engineering possibilities of it and how monstrous it is and just the specs of it alone like um, you know 50 60 years to build it but you'd have to have the blueprints of what you were building so you'd already have to have this advanced knowledge way 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 before that any of us even knew about it and these people like Einstein are giving theories out that you already knew and you know it's 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 crazy to even conceive so I mean I know, you know, for a fact, there's smaller ones everywhere, but uh, when you look into, like, magic and circles and sacred geometry and things like that, it just, it seems like they're literally, you know, or you go back to the Emerald Tablets, they tell you that the man before Atlantis uh, lift, uh, opened a gate to below and let these serpent-headed creatures, is how he thought, set it in there, in, up into this world, and, and it was like kind of caused a rift in this dimension you know we we couldn't see them because they were of another vibration as he said it and it's, it's really weird to think about because as i said in like this the old knowledge it said uh the lucifer experiment was uh, a shot at free will they were trying to give like con disconnect it from its source and give like man free will like and instead of having like a destiny or like a kind of a purpose you know you could kind of just do what you want good or evil and it was like the the idea was, as it says, is like it was the bad battle between good and evil. It was the battle between two brothers, you know. And we know that story all too well, most of us. Um, the battle between two brothers, you know. You go back right. to Quetzalcoatl, Veracocha, and all that stuff. I mean, the, he, the plumed serpent. It's like what a bearded white man comes to your land, gives you knowledge. The Hopi, all these tribes, and it seems like he went from east to west, you know. And then you read these texts and it told you exactly that, you know, gets even creepier when they, when you think about him saying like, oh, I parked my spaceship under the Sphinx and <laughs> like the Hall of Records is if you draw a line from the Sphinx and to the apex of the Great Pyramid and then crisscross that right and bisect it. It shows you, I mean, like it, it gives you a map of where to dig and everything. It's like crazy stuff to think about and it all interconnects and it, it, it seems like wow <laughs> you know even the the name like i said the lucifer experiment that's what they called it back then they said there was three attempts at it so 
it's it's really weird to think about. I mean, this this is obviously about um, enriching, you know, crystals and baking crystals and basically like a space furnace of a planet or whatever. They're trying to make make things that nature does and also map out dark matter and dark particles and dark energy and harness, you know, kinetic energy like out of potential energy like at will. So you have the ability to create or destroy anything you want. That's essentially what it is, you know. You know, the the dark matter, I've heard there's a lot more dark matter in the universe than just regular matter. Yeah, it's there's 7.4% luminous matter so that's anything that interacts with the uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh 25.6 something like that uh dark matter and then the rest is dark energy so like 74 percent dark energy so only eight percent of like the known universe you can see within the electromagnetic spectrum so they think that all these other things actually may only interact with like um instead of like on an electromagnetic level a strong a strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force they think they might only interact on like two aspects so they call it like weak force and things like that um they think that that's kind of why it's all around us and it actually influences the curves of galaxies and the spins of the planets and things like that more than the the known matter does the the mass that we can see and there's a cloud of it around the edge of every solar system of every universe of every galaxy it's like uh it's weird how they they can tell like um how the milky way spins and stuff like that they can tell you know a lot about that because the curvature doesn't allow for the amount of mass that's there like they look at it and they're like wow only like eight percent of the weights ac accounted for but we can you know, we can obviously see the effects of gravity and uh, weak um, weak nuclear force, but they can't see the strong or the electromagnetic. So it, if it's not electromagnetic, we don't see it, you see, and there you go. So there, how, do you, how do you see something you can't see, you know? That's what their the aim is. <laughs> Well, you know, it's fascinating because we only see 0.01% of the electromagnetic light spectrum if we're lucky. A lot of times, somebody's brain will filter out another 50% based upon their beliefs and their upbringing. So when you think about the possibilities and you look at the images that are released from, like, the Hubble telescope or other incredible astrophotography, you realize that those colors are stacked, you know, multiple layers put together to have one image. And it's just the possibilities are endless when you think about, you know, let's get into dark matter for a minute. Dark matter could actually be illuminated in a different dimension. So even though in this specific dimension we're seeing 7.4% illuminated matter, maybe when you go to the other side or another dimension per se, there's another 7.4% illuminated and another you know 93.6 that is not well maybe that's a different 7.4 percent so what i'm what i'm saying is maybe it just goes into a whole other paradigm fractals of within fractals within fractals all inside of this matrix that seems to have many hologram type um traits in character essentially yeah it's it's essentially it's just things in a different density so if you think about vibration and frequency and things like that, you know, you can take it as an, if thought is faster than light and then we can send messages faster than light, then light's the next thing. And then below light is matter. And then below that is time, essentially, because time is the only thing that gives proof to matter. You could kind of break it down that in higher densities, that thought could kind of give, you know, direct um, existence to matter and things like that. Uh, and the, in these places, they like you're saying, uh, maybe something that's solid here is liquid there, or something that's dark matter there is light matter here, or uh, vice versa. It could be, you know, these things. But it, in that aspect, when you look at the perfect crystalline structures, like the things that uh, people hold sacred and quartz and things like that, um, they're perfect. They're crystalline structures, and they, they can store countless amounts of information so uh, uh what if you know possibly they stay the same in other dimensions and things like that maybe that's how they work you know as uh, mirrors to the other place or information you know 
relayers and or vibrational, you know, everything. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to grow these selenium crystals, these the rarest of the rare, you know. And it's it's really it's a lot to think about, man. It's so much to take in, and you're always going to be speculating. But why name it Lucifer? Like, why give people that? Like, ah, you know, that it's it's done for a reason. I mean, it's it's all done for a reason. They could have named it like, you know, the Newton Project or anything. They could have named it anything, but they they chose to name it the Lucifer Experiment. You oh, know? exactly. I mean, every time you hear those acronyms, and then especially the alphabet agencies that have these acronyms with the projects that they're working on, they're designed specifically to also have an impact on the subconscious mind as well as the conscious mind. Everything is designed at that level to some degree, and it's usually in the favor of the house. Yeah, it's... It's always, um, like, as you said, like, well, when you're thinking about it, if, if they, these people had this knowledge and it wasn't lost and these initiated people have been passing it on and initiating others throughout time, then they understand the power of, you know, the collective consciousness and they can, they use it against us, you know, they, they use it to steer us and poison us. Like, you know, as I said, like, uh, of, it's using like a snake's own venom against itself, you know, it's the same idea. So if we kind of just snap out of that and steer it, for a couple of us, it'll it'll guide the awakening process. We can kind of be the shepherds of the sheep, if you will, and steer the boat. If, and uh, you know, you don't have to live in the fear porn and this, that, and the other. There's always a possibility, and it's great that you have a conscience. And you're like, oh, what if we destroy the universe? Oh, great. We'll think about that. Always keep that in mind. But it doesn't mean that it's always going to be that aspect. You know, when you're thinking about it, but that could always be a fact. You know, cause and effect. You might be trying to enrich these crystals or as it says turn seven here's like 70 different recipes to turn gas to metal in these high pressure <laughs> ovens with uranium basically is what they're talking about and uh things like that it's almost alchemy so it's it's you know almost godlike if you would if you would and i i feel i don't think man is ready for that kind of science i really don't i feel like We've disconnected from our spiritual mind. I think that's why they're doing this whole fear process and things like that. They're trying to get us to live in like uh, our right side of mind. I mean, think about it. They, they or your, your left brain, right brain. You're, they're trying to get you to be like left brain. You know, like uh, you know, right-handed. They they used to enforce that and punish kids for not writing with their right hand, stuff like that. And you look back far far enough. Um, it's they want this like male-dominated, like direct. You know, no female energy, no like free flowing um, energy. You know, they they don't want you thinking outside the box or critical thinking or anything like that. They want you to do your job, be direct, kind of be cold. You know, let's slaughter millions of animals and just kind of throw them away in the trash because we're not hungry and this and you know, it's like it's crazy. It's you really think about it all. Like, I think we need to get connected with our spiritual side a lot more before we can take on this kind of knowledge and i think that's why when they talked about forbidden knowledge and things like that because imagine you know imagine angry people with bombs and nuclear weapons and things like that like we all share this planet we only get one so you know it's a lot to take in it is man and you bring a good point we all share this planet we need to respect it we need to realize that eventually if we keep working down this path of building bigger bombs, more destructive technologies and stuff, you know, what if there's that one rogue individual that gets access to it somehow and then releases it to the masses? And, and that would be detrimental. Yeah. And if you believe in reincarnation, you know, I mean, if we come back to this planet, we definitely want it to be beautiful. And even if don't, even if not, we want it to be beautiful for the future generations. So that's definitely something to think about. And I'll tell you, Jason, I really appreciate you coming on here with us and giving us this update um is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we close out tonight nope uh if anybody finds any interest in this i just uh look up the lucifer experiment see what you could find on um the actual uh it, the ancient secret flower of uh the book the ancient secret flower of life i think it's um drew below malchizedek wrote it i believe so if you guys want to Hear more about this and how it ties into Thoth and uh, the Anunnaki, things like that.